Hello sales freaks, it's Aiden here and I make these videos to capture lightning in a bottle. Now it's important to remember nothing happens in our economy until a sale is made. Today I'm happy to introduce you to Mark Hunter, the sales hunter and author of A Mind for Sales. Enjoy. The greatest challenge we have in sales, I don't think is the process, it's our mindset. Sales is not what we sell. It's not how we sell. It's why we sell. To help other people. If your objective is not to positively impact other people, then why are you in sales? Because it's not the product. It's not the product. It's the outcome. The outcome that the customer's going to get. You can't take a Walmart shopper and make them a Nordstrom customer. If you're Nordstrom, why are you messing around with Walmart shoppers? I'm not knocking Walmart. They have a great business model. But it's for that customer base. You see, the challenge you've got to do is you've got to go back to the prospecting phase. Who are you prospecting? Who are you dealing with? There's no such thing as a price that's too high. It's really only the value that's too low. I increase the value, I increase the price. It's not for you to determine what your value proposition is. Don't. I work with a lot of companies and wow, our prices are so high. I can't believe we, we charge this much money. I go, look, you village idiot. That's why your kids don't have shoes. <laughs> it's not what you think is value. It's what the customer thinks is value. This is why the confidence is so critical. If you don't prospect with integrity, you don't get clients who have integrity. Low prices attract low level customers. You see, we have to know who is our target audience. And what happens is we're spending way too much time trying to come up with leads that if you have a heartbeat, if you have a heartbeat, you are a lead. Well, let me tell you something, my dog has got a heartbeat. My dog ain't buying anything from me. <laughs> Sales is about positively impacting other people. And if you truly believe that you can help somebody, don't you want to get in touch with them? Don't you want to interact with them? What's the outcome the customer is looking to receive? It's totally irrelevant what I sell. When I uncover the outcome, then I have an understanding with the customer and I can deliver profit. The customers you get are a reflection of who you are. I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. I wrote the book, High Profit Prospecting. Let's talk a little bit about what are the keys to prospecting successfully. First of all, you gotta stop and ask yourself, do you have a process that you can believe in? Too many times what I find is, it's not the process, but it's whether or not you believe in it. Now, what do I mean by this? You've got to be able to stick to it. You see, one and done does not work in prospecting. Don't start what you can't finish. Too many people sit there and they put a couple messages out and they say, well, I've reached the, I, they don't, they don't want to talk to me. If I'm not willing to go to five, six, seven, eight messages over a concentrated period of time, I'm not prospecting effectively to understand who might be there, who I can know I can help. Now that's the other key piece. Do you believe in how you can help others? Do you believe in how you can help your customer? Now think about this for just a moment. If you don't believe in yourself at 110%, why would your customers believe in you? This means you really have to take the approach of saying, my objective is to make sure that I can get you as a customer because I know I can help you and I can't help you until you become a customer. You see, now that creates another situation that we have to look at in terms of what makes prospecting successful. And that's very simply this. Do you have a dedicated time with which to prospect? You know, the late Zig Ziglar had a great comment. He said, you know, it's really like taking a shower. You tend to do it every day. Prospecting must be part of your culture. It must be part of what you do fundamentally all the time. Here's what I found. When I'm prospecting continuously, regularly, I have a greater ability to make it about the customer, about the person I'm trying to reach. You see, that's probably one of the biggest issues. And I think prospecting 
has going against it right now is that salespeople make it all about themselves. Here's how we can help you. Here's what, that, that's not what the customer wants to hear. The customer wants to know, how is this going to help me? Focus the mission, focus the objective of your prospecting on the customer. What does that do? It also changes your attitude. What does it do? It helps you believe even more in what it is you can be doing to help others. What does it help? It helps you believe even more in yourself. And that really is the fundamental piece of prospecting. When you believe in yourself at 110%, it's amazing how much more successful you'll be. Hey, Mark Hunter, the sales hunter, and I did write the book, High Profit Prospecting. Great sell. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter, and I wrote the book, A Mind for Sales. And people ask me all the time, what does it take to have a mind for sales. I'm going to walk you through the 10 things that I identify in this book. Hey, and I want you to hit subscribe. I want you to connect with all the videos I put out every week, new video talking about a sales issue relative to you and jump to my website, thesaleshunter.com. Why? Because out there you can connect with the Sales Hunter University where I've got a special master class on what does it take to have a mind for sales. Grab it right now. Let's go through the 10 things. The 10 things. Number one, knowing you're in control. You see, too many salespeople allow other people to be in control. No, you're the one in control. When you have a mind for sales, you know that you are the one that controls your environment. You are, well, you don't control your environment. You control how you react to your environment. You see, when you're in control, you are the one that is responsible for your own actions. You don't pass blame. You don't lay it on the feet of other people. You take control. You take responsibility. Number two, you're a discipline of time. And I can't stress this enough. Time is an asset that you can't make more of. We all are blessed with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's only a matter of how we choose to use it. And I can't stress this enough. You see, what really having a mind for sales is all about is knowing how you use your time and knowing how to use it wisely so that you're spending your time not on busy activities, but on productive activities. Big difference there. Got several videos out on my YouTube channel that deal with time. Check those out. Number three, an optimistic mindset. Of course you have to be optimistic. You can't have a pessimistic mindset and have a mind for sales because sales is about helping others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible, right? Well, to do that, you've got to be optimistic about the outcomes, about the benefits, about how you can help other people. That's what sales is all about. Number four, hey, it builds right on number three, passion for people. You see, sales is not about yourself. Sure, sales is about results. I get that. Salespeople are very competitive, but they're competitive because they have a passion to help people. Are you more focused on making a commission or are you more focused on helping people? See, when you have passion to help people, when you have passion to take the time to listen, when you have passion to empathize, when you have passion to make a difference in people, it's amazing at the results you can achieve because people know that you're focused on them, not on you. Number five, again, continues to build on it, a servant attitude. A servant attitude means you're willing to go the extra mile to, to get what needs to be done to get done. Servant attitude means that you're focused on helping other people. You're serving other people. You see, you're not putting your needs first, you're putting the needs of the customer first. A servant attitude means you're there for the customer when they need you. Servant attitude means you're also taking care of yourself. Because here's the whole thing, if you don't first take care of yourself, you'll never be in a position to take care of other people. Number six, knowing the solutions you create. You see, what's very interesting is, if you don't know the outcomes you create, if you don't know how you help people, well, how can you even say that you're in sales? You see. Salespeople are very focused at knowing what are the solutions they create. And they're zeroed in, laser focused on helping people see those solutions. 
and they really only spend time with people who can benefit from those solutions. You see, this comes back to really that whole thing of being discipline of time and being really in control. They know who to spend time with and who not to spend time with. Number seven, they see sales as a lifestyle. You see, now think about this for a moment. Seeing sales as a lifestyle means that it's not a job. It's not something you tune in and you tune out. No, it's something that you do all the time. And you're just wired to be open to knowing that whatever you do, it's a sales opportunity. What does that do? That puts you in a better position to understand. It puts you in a better position to listen. It puts you in a better position to see opportunities that nobody else thought were out there. But you see them because you're viewing sales as a lifestyle. Number eight, you're goal-driven. Yeah, you're goal-driven. You bet you're goal See, salespeople are competitive. I, I said that earlier, right? But goal what does goal-driven mean? It means that when I set a goal, I achieve it. I don't stop. And I don't just set a goal to set a goal. I set a goal and then I build a plan. See, that's, that's the big difference between a lot of people out there. A lot of people set goals, but they never really set a plan to achieve it. You see, when you have a mind for sales, you set goals, but you set a plan to achieve it. Number nine, you're focused. You see how number nine builds on number eight, being focused? Yes, you're focused. Because you know what your goals are. You know the solutions you can provide. You know who you're going to be focused in on. And what does that mean? You're focused. And what does this do? It helps you be a better steward of your time. Go back to number two in terms of discipline of time, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. When you're focused, it's amazing how clear everything comes in to being in your mind. And you know what? When things are clear in your mind, they become clear in your customers' minds. Now let's get to number 10. Number 10, continuous learning. You see, when you have a mind for sales, you never stop learning. You are continuously learning. Why? Because you know there's more knowledge to be gained. There's more knowledge to be gained so you can help more people. There's, there's more knowledge to be gained because you're on a continuous path of improving. You're never settling. You really view it this way. You view yourself as a green apple. And why a green apple? Because a green apple is still getting better. A red apple is as good as it's going to get, right? But a green apple is always getting better. Hello, Aiden Ray with Janitorial Marketing Solutions. We are a lead generation prospecting company for the janitorial sector. Now, what does that mean? It means we create awareness or one-to-many prospecting and marketing campaigns on your behalf. Prospecting is more one-to-one -one where we then take that awareness and create engagement and relationships to drive meetings for you and your sales team. So click the link below for more information. I love that line. I love that view. You see, what will you do today? By watching this video, you're practicing continuous learning. Hey, those are the 10 things that I talk about a lot in my book, A Mind for Sales, along with a whole host of, if you haven't read the book, read the book. I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. I want to share with you some more concepts and ideas from the, the Sales Hunter University. This is a program that we've put together where we offer training content. I want you to check it out. Hey, hit the link right there. Hit the link right there. Check everything out. It's valuable. It's all right there for you. And we got a new class out right now on how to follow up. And I want you to check that class out in particular because I'll tell you what, it's powerful, it's packed, it's going to help you really master the art of follow up because too many salespeople lose deals. They may have one initial contact or they may have one additional, you know, something, and then they lose sight. They, they lose everything. You can't afford that. You can't afford it. So how to follow up with a prospect? One, the easiest way, replay what they say. You may have had one conversation with them and they shared with you one piece of information. So what you do in the email, you play back to them. You say, hey, I want to talk some more because you mentioned this. And you text, you, you write out exactly what they shared with you. You can put this into a voicemail. Same thing. And you say, I, I, I want to really find out more about what you're thinking on that. I want, to, I want to build on that. And maybe you ask a challenging question on that, which is number two, ask questions. See, you see, they're going to follow up with you or they'll be more inclined to follow up with you if you are placing value and interest in what they share with you. 
This is one of the key things I say in that initial prospecting call. I want you to share with me one piece of information. I want you, the prospect, to share with me one piece of information because if you share with me one piece of information, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to run with it. And I'm going to run with it by replaying what they say. I'm going to ask questions. And the next one is I'm going to build in their comments. See, this is what's cool. I can build on it. You mentioned this, and let me. Add, I want to add some more comments. I, I want to add some more. I'll, I want to share some more ideas. I'll, I'll, I'm going to share with you some more insights, some more ways it's helping people. What am I doing here? I'm taking what you say and placing value around it and building on it. Next one is I want to create scenarios. What's creating scenarios? Creating scenarios is this picture where you're almost telling a story and it may be a story that you're telling. You see what you're doing is you're sharing with the client, hey, or the prospect, hey, I shared this and next time we connect, I want to share with you this situation I saw in another company, very similar to yours. You see, I'm creating a scenario that is relevant and pertinent to them. By the way, you mentioned this and I recently saw this in another organization, very same situation, and I got some ideas on it. You see, I'm creating a scenario. Next one is I'm going to be ha I'm going to talk about risk. You see, there's two things that are moving people right now: risk, and I'll get to the other one in just a bit. But I love risk for this reason. People will many times only make a decision if they feel it's risky if they don't make a decision. So you have to start talking risk. Well, yeah, we can forego this conversation, but with these changes, it is going to impact other things. Or here's because of what the competition's doing, here's what's going on, you see. So you, you, you do very much run the risk if you don't make a decision. And the other one is urgency. Yeah, yeah, see, urgency very much comes in play. Yeah, it's really important for us to be able to, to talk right now because of the urgency of the supply chain because there are issues in the supply chain or there's issues with this, whatever it is. But you create urgency. The last one I want to share with you is making sure that everything you say always has a clear call to action. Don't leave things vague. We're going to follow up on this and be very, very specific. Prospects don't want to be left hanging by salespeople because if the salesperson leaves, leaves them hanging, Fine, they'll just go someplace else. Or they choose to make no decision at all. Hey, I want to share these with you. These are all strategies and ideas. And I want you to check out my new course out there on how to follow up. Go to learn.thesalescenter. The link is right there. Grab it, grab it, go to it, get it. Check out all of the programs in the Sales Center University. Because we got email prospecting, phone prospecting. We have got all kinds of prospecting, and, and there's multiple levels, and I really want to encourage you to jump into level three, because level three gets you really face-to-face -face time with me, as I have open office hours and a variety of other things that you get to participate in. Plus, when you buy the annual membership, you basically get all these programs for the same price. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's a bargain. It's a bargain that you can't pass up. Check that out, learn.thesalescenter.com. I'm Mark Hunter, The Sales Center. Great selling. Hey, Mark Hunter of the Sales Center, back with another phone prospecting video for you. And it comes right out of my masterclass. I tell you what, a whole bunch of content out there. I do want to. Our online program, the Sales Center University, was named as one of the top 10. Really, it's, it's that powerful. It's that good. And we have a new course out there on phone prospecting. Really suggest you check it out. Just go to my website, thesalescenter.com. So how do you build a prospecting campaign. How do you build a telephone prospecting campaign? Number one, you've got to have a cadence. A cadence, that's your strategy, that's your plan, that's your process. What you're going to be using is what are the number of calls I'm going to be making? What's the frequency of the calls I'm going to be making? What's the messaging? What are all those elements that go into play? And once I build that cadence, I stick with it. This is the blueprint. You would not build a building, you would not build a house without having architectural plans. Same thing with your prospecting plan. You want to make sure that you have your architectural drawings. You have your design laid out. And you know what's very interesting? When you look at an architectural design for a building or a house, there's always one image there of what it's going to look like when it's completed. 
Same thing. This is what you're crafting in your mind. You're crafting in your mind. This is what a successful phone call is going to look like. This all goes into your cadence. Number two, ICP. You see, you got to know who your ICP is. Now, what's ICP? Ideal customer profile. I stress this, I stress this, I stress this, and I can't stress it enough. Too much time is wasted because we're making phone calls, spending cycles, trying to reach people who do not line up with their ICP. The tighter you have your ICP, the more successful you're going to be. Very, very simple. Again, I've got a course out there on ICP. I suggest you grab it. It'll help you with it. Number three, CTA. What's your CTA? Call to action. It's not Chicago Transit Authority. It's call to action. What is this? This is about when I call you, this is what I want the next step to be. Now, the next step might be just to get an appointment because I'm calling you. I'm interrupting you. You probably don't have time for me. So the next step might be that. The next step might be, it might be if you're in a short sales cycle to actually get the order. The next uh, clear call to action might be to have you sign up for this webinar where I'll be participating with you. The, it, it, you can have any number of CTAs, but the idea is to be very clear and very succinct with it. In a very advanced call strategy, I'll say, here's my primary CTA and here's my secondary CTA. In other words, what I do is I have a primary CTA and the primary CTA might be the appointment. Hey, let's talk tomorrow at 10 a.m. If I can't get that, then my secondary CTA is I'm going to send you an email or would you go to this website and download this and take a look at this and let me know what you think. Now, that's a weak secondary, but sometimes I can't get the primary. So at least by having you do this, I can measure, I can monitor as to whether or not you actually did it. See, what does that do? That gives me insight as to how engaged or how involved you might be in this process. Number four, time blocking. You've got to set aside the time to do it. You see, think about this. You don't get a gym membership and think you're going to be in shape. The gym membership becomes valuable when you actually go into the gym and work out. And that means you've got to dedicate time. You have to dedicate time to it. And, and most people who have a gym membership, what they do is there's a dedicated time every day or certain days of the week that they go to the gym. And that helps them get in shape and stay in shape. Time blocking is absolutely essential in terms of building your prospecting campaign. Number five, I've got to have goals. I have to have goals. Go back to what I was talking about earlier in terms of the architectural plan. You know, the, what's the visual look like? Well, yeah, you see, the goals. What are my goals? My goals might be the number of calls I tend to make today. Goals might be these are the number of prospects that I want, ultimately want to turn into customers. You set your goals because here's what happens. You want to inspect what you expect. So if your goal is to make X number of calls a day, then you set that goal. And you know what? What you inspect is what you will expect. It's amazing how it happens. Number six, talking points, statements. You see, you have to be very clear about what are the talking points that you're going to share and when are you going to share them. You see, there are certain talking points that you may use earlier in a phone call and talking points that you might be later in a phone call if that phone call is going well. You see, but you got to be very clear with that and confident because what does this allow you to do? It allows you to exude confidence and trust to the person on the other end. What does that mean? That means they'll share with you more information. Next one is talking points and questions. You see, I don't start the call off by asking you dumb stuff. I start the call off by asking you insightful questions that are going to engage you. But that means I've got to be prepared. I've got to be prepared with questions that are relevant to your industry, to who you are, to your business. To all. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, it comes back to that ICP. The clearer the ICP is, the more insightful your questions are going to be and the more insightful your statements are going to be. Number eight, objection responses. You see, there's always going to be typical objections that you hear. And you want to be very confident as to what your response is. What is your response? So you don't get caught short. You don't get caught off guard. And you know how to respond. One of the most typical ones is, you know, why don't you just uh, email me some information and I'll take a look at it and I'll get back to you. 
what's your response? What's your response? Your response is, you know what? We've got a lot of information we could share with you. If you can just answer two questions for me, I'll be able to understand better what to send you. Now, what am I doing? I'm engaging you. You see, I'm, I'm trying to get you past this block to actually engage you. And hopefully if I do a good job of asking two questions that engage, I can go to three, four, five, six, and I get to have a conversation. I want to be able to have a very clear, articulate response with every type of objection I encounter. Hey, eight things that you can be doing to help build a phone prospecting campaign. Here's number nine. I want you to go out to the Sales Hunter University. Go to the website, thesaleshunter.com. You'll see it right there, up at the top, university. And I want you to get the phone prospecting masterclass. Or you can go, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop down to the description. It's right there for you. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. I want you to be successful with your phone prospecting.